Hello everyone and welcome to episode 65 of Universe Mode. Welcome to episode 65 of Universe Mode. It's been a while. It's been a while since we've done some Universe Mode, but here we are. Feels good to be back doing uh, some Universe Mode again. So, let's get right into it. We are still on the build up to SummerSlam. So, so yep, yeah, we'll be hearing from the SmackDown Women's Champion, Sasha Banks, the longest reigning champion in history. We now know that Liv Morgan, who won the Queen of the Ring, has selected the boss as her opponent at SummerSlam. Whoa. Okay, Sasha just name dropped Triple H and Stephanie for some reason. <laughs> that was uh, very out of nowhere. <laughs> Well, that was a strong that was a strong uh, promo to start things off. Let me just check if all the entrances are on before. All right, cool. All right, I just had to double check everything because I hate when the game automatically turns off entrances. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the first match, and that being Kyrie Sane, she'll face off against Nia Jax. I know, I watched Raw Talk. So did Seamus. 
Sheamus wanted Braun on on, on that. So did Sheamus. Sheamus wanted Drew on Team Raw as well. well. Here's Kyrie saying the Pirate Princess. She has been struggling as of late. She is looking to climb back up. She's looking to climb back up in the rating rankings. So here comes the irresistible force, Nia Jax. She is very unlike most girls. She is unlike most girls. This is going to be a tough match for Kyrie. This is going to be a tough match indeed for Kyrie Sane. So here we go. And the matchup is underway. Here we go. So this is going to be a tough matchup for Kyrie. Oh man, what a DDT. Yeah, I think he will. You know what was the most hilarious thing I heard? I know it's not true, but I saw someone say that WWE changed Matt Riddle's name, and this is probably the most funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh man, Nia put in the boot on, on her. People were saying, I saw someone say that they think WWE took Matt Riddle's name took off Matt off his name off Matt Riddle it's because in that way people don't Google search him and find out all about his uh, allegations I mean honestly like that is by far one of the most stupidest reasons I know it's not true I doubt that's not the real reason why they changed his name but seriously Everyone knows about his allegations. Everybody knows the shit that this guy has done. You can't hide his past. WWE cannot hide his past. There is no reason to it. I don't think they're a team because I saw on Raw Talk they were like they were basically saying like they're not a team. I think they made made a statement saying they're not a team. And if you watched Raw Talk, they they went at it. They went back and forth with each other. They were really going at each other's throats. Now look at this. Oh man. Powerbomb by Nia Jax. Nia Jax now. Oh, look at this. An arrogant pin by Nia Jax. Oh, a boot right to the boot right. Nia, Nia performing an arrogant pin. And, oh, and a spine buster. Nia Jax now just toying. Well, at least in my opinion they are. Oh man, a back fist out though. That uh, back fist by Kyrie. Kyrie now. Look at Kyrie go fighting with all, with all, with all, with all, with, with all her heart and passion. And now, and now Nia Jax now fighting back. Oh no. Oh my god. 
Bonsai drop. A Bonsai drop. Oh, and Kyrie. Manages to kick out. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought that, yeah, that was pretty silly. Oh, my God. Kyrie now trying to, oh. Look at Kyrie go, using all her heart. And now, fighting, fighting for her life here. Kyrie now goes up to the top rope. The insane elbow. She hits it. The elbow drop to Nia Jax. Oh, what a kick at it, too. Nia Jax kicks out at two. Oh no! And now, and now Kyrie now trying to fight. Oh! And now, and oh man, this is not good for Kyrie Sane. And now Nia Jax now beating the hell. And oh, the spine buster! The spine buster! Oh, and Kyrie again! Sh sh kicks out. You gotta give. Got Kyrie has a lot of heart, but I don't know how much longer she has left. And now, and now Nia Jax. Oh no, this could. This is it. Oh, and the Samoa drop. The Samoa drop to Kyrie Sane. And Nia Jax walks away with the win. Well, 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 finally, at least we've got someone in here that agrees that, that, that Lana sucks. I've been saying that for ages. Lana is awful. She needs to be off TV. Nia Jax walks away with the victory over Kyrie Sane. A valiant effort from the Pirate Princess, but it just wasn't enough. I hope so. It'd be yeah, I know. No one likes Lana. Seriously. And here comes Shinsuke Nakamura. Yep, that's true. Nobody likes Lana. Could you see John Morrison possibly causing, costing the Miz? I don't know. I don't know. It'd be funny if he did. Here comes Shinsuke Nakamura's opponent. 
Cedric Alexander. I hope Sasha retains too. She needs to retain. Oh man! What a start by Cedric. Wow, Shinsuke. Oh, taunting. I've been saying for ages, but I know you just said Mandy, but I'm including Dana Brooke. I've been saying those two are really talented, and look at how close those two were. Those two were really giving Shayna and Nia Jax problems in that tag team match, and they only lost because of Lana. They only lost because of Lana. They were really in control. They were doing so good. And all it took was Lana getting involved to completely mess them up. Which is kind of the main reason why I was a bit upset. But as I said, I didn't but as I said in my review, I didn't want to waste my time yelling because well yesterday it was hot. You know what's funny? Yesterday in Australia it was really hot, but now it's but now it's really cold. Well, not really cold, but now but now the sun's not not a thing. I I thought it was interesting. I talked about I I, I talked about it in uh, my review. Um, I said I don't think I don't see Mia winning obviously I don't see Mia Yim winning obviously but I think you know just those two having a match would be really entertaining I think those two just having a great match would be really fun but yeah Mia won't win but it will be a good match and that's the prop that's that and that's the big problem about retribution like they talk all this crap but they can't but they just can't seem to get the job done ah uh, look who's here the Lana lover yes I will blame Yet, yes, I will blame Lana. You can't tell me what to do, Kevin. Lana, it's all Lana's fault. Yes, it really was. Clap, clap. It's all Lana's fault. Yes, it, yes, it was. It's all Lana's fault. Yes, it, yes, it was. I'll keep saying it over and over and over again just to drive you nuts, Kevin. It, it is Lana's fault. It is Lana's fault. It is Lana's fault. It was all Lana's fault. It was Lana's fault. It was Lana's fault. Everything's Lana's fault. It was all Lana's fault. It's Lana's fault. 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 Check your gob. Check your gob. Lana's fault. Lana's fault! Don't argue. Don't argue with me. It was Lana's fault. She got up on the apron. Lana's fault.
You know I can't take you serious. You know, you, 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 you know, you, you know I can't take you seriously, you being a Lana fan. Yes, Lana did get on, get on the apron. You saw it. You know, Kevin, you, you, you know, you know I can't take you seriously that you're a Lana fan, Kevin. You remind me like, you remind me of another friend. I'm not going to name names, but. You remind me of another friend who is completely blinded by his obsession with his favorites that he will never fault them for doing anything wrong or he will think they're too good. And there's the lumbar check by Cedric. Oh man, a kick out by Nakamura. But yes, you remind me of another friend. Like I said, I'm not naming names, but you remind me of another friend. Yes, it was Lana's fault. Correct! And there's the King Shasa by Nakamura. And there's the win. No, not you, Sean. It's not you. Chill. No, it's not you, Sean. Chill. I don't care. I don't care, Kevin. I don't care, Kevin. I can't take you seriously. Well, we're going to be hearing from the king, Baron Corbin. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, I know you did. At least they're not feuding with uh, We Never Lose campaign. <laughs> uh, ne we Never Lose business. At, le at least they're not feuding with uh, the hurt We Never Lose to anyone business. Seriously, I'm so freaking gobsmacked about how WWE continues to push the hurt business down our throats. It's stupid. Oh, here comes the Universal Champion. 
Oh, here comes the Universal Champion, Robert Roode. It'll be King Corbin and Robert Roode at SummerSlam for the Universal Championship. Who do I like in Retribution? Well, I like all the guys, but I'm just saying. Well, I like all of... Well, I actually like all of them. Especially Shane Thorne. Well, the Slapjack one is Shane Thorne. But I just want them to be taken seriously. Yeah, we haven't seen Corbin since uh, his feud with Matt Riddle ended. Ho ho hopefully, he hopefully he gets like a gimmick change or something. And let's not and and and, and, and Shane Thorne or Slapjack, whatever people want to freaking call him. He's the only Retribution member to score a pinfall win in Retribution, so not so no one can take that away from him. He may never win another match again in Retribution, but no one can take away the fact that he successfully pinned MVP. What happened to Big E? Well, maybe they've got nothing for him. Maybe they're getting ready to repackage him and give him new music. Only time will tell. We could just only time will tell. Oh. Uh oh. Oh! <laughs> oh! King! Oh no! Right in his King Jewels! Robert Roode kicking Baron Corbin right where the sun don't shine. Right in his royal, right in his royal jewels. And here we go. The brawl is on between the number one contender for the Universal Championship and the champion. Oh, right. In the uh oh, the king. The king now has control. And now, and now the king slides out of the ring, going, go, go, going after the universal champion. Well, yeah, that's why she wasn't on the show because she wasn't scheduled. Why would you have her on the show if she's not scheduled? That that that's like saying that's that that's like saying that that's like saying Sasha Banks was on SmackDown and that's because that's like saying Sasha Banks was on SmackDown. I heard she was scheduled for the show. That that that's that's what it, that's what like that that is what you sounded like you were saying there, Sean, like saying Oscar wasn't on the show because I heard she wasn't scheduled. Well, that's why she wasn't on the show because she wasn't scheduled. That's like scheduling someone on the show, and then you're like, oh, I heard that this person was scheduled on the show. Well, yeah, because they were on the show. Oh, and rude. What is going to happen when these two collide?
Well, coming up next, we've got some tag team action. Yep, it seems like it was fake. Yep. It seems like it was fake. They, yep, and I agree. They never should have broken up the Iconics. Vince McMahon just used the Peyton singles push. He used it as an excuse to break them up. It's like it's like he broke them up, and then they and they said, "Well, why do you want to break them up?" And then he was like, "Uh, just tell them we're giving Peyton a singles push," you know. Well, here we go, tag team action. Heavy machinery. Our in action against the Undisputed Errors, Rob and Bob Express. Toot toot. Well, here they, well, here they come. Uh, heavy machinery heading to the ring for some tag team action. I don't trust Vince. I mean, who does trust? I mean, who doesn't trust Vince? And here comes the Rob and Bob Express. It's such an odd name for a tag team. The Undisputed Errors, Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish in tag team action as they call themselves the Rob and Bob Express. So this should be interesting. Former tag team champions, the Undisputed Era, possibly one of the all-time great stables. They would love to climb up the mountain and become SmackDown tag team champions. But they're going to have to get past former Raw tag team champions. Yes, for those that know, but for those that do not know. Heavy Machinery were once Raw Tag Team Champions in Universe Mode. It's just that no one would remember because it was so long ago. It was all the way back in the original Season 1. On 2K19. Oh man, Roderick Strong just trying to overpower Tucker. But you know, that's going to be one of the big, that's gonna be one of the big uh, problems here for, for uh, all the Rob and Bob Express. Is that maybe, since Tucker and Otis are, are big men... They could have real tough issues, you know, trying to... Oh, put them down. Well... I really, I really don't know why WWE thought it was a good idea to break up Otis and Tucker. Yeah, let. Because fans are bloody. Because the because. Well, Vince has every right to say that, you know, I've heard, like, Michael discussed it, this with me, you know, a few nights ago, that we discussed about how Vince has every, every, has every right to think that, that the fans don't know what they want, and that's, and that's technically true, because it is true that fans don't know what they want. They say they want something, and then WWE gives it to them, and then they act like, they never wanted it. Like, they all wanted, like, there's a many examples I can give here. Like, they wanted Seth Rollins as the Universal Champion. Vince made him Universal Champion. Fans turned on him. 
They all wanted Becky Lynch to be the top star of WWE instead of Charlotte. They made Becky Lynch the top star. They all turned on her. And um, uh, they also made um, Kofi WWE Champion. They made Kofi uh, WWE Champion. And fans, uh, well, well, fans love Kofi. I don't think anyone really turned on him. And, like, there's just so many examples. There's just so many examples. Like, Seth and Becky just stands out the biggest one to me. Like, there's so many examples of fans wanting someone pushed, and they immediately turn on it. There's so many examples. I could go on and on and on, but, you know, I think Seth and Becky are easily the best examples of this. And it's not because of their booking. It's because the fans are selfish. They wanted something. And, and, because, and because WWE actually listened to them, then they start acting like they never wanted Seth and Becky as the top stars of the company. They all wanted Drew McIntyre pushed, but Drew McIntyre, you know, got his push. Some fans might be happy for him, but then there'll be some people that are, that, that hate it. There are going to be some fans that, that hated uh, Drew's push, Drew getting pushed, because, you know, fans are never satisfied. Second thing is fans wanted Seth Rollins as a heel, and he turns heel, and everyone starts acting like, oh, this is not what we wanted. We wanted the Seth Rollins from 2015. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, you wanted him as a heel. You, you either take it or you leave it. So, yes, no one asked for Seth and Ray's feud to go on as long as it did. But, you know, that's just WWE for you. Oh, look at this. Oh, ho, 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 notice now. Oh, the... The Caterpillar. The Caterpillar, the Rob and Bob Express, would that be a better name? Well, not better than Undisputed Era, but... <laughs> oh, now look at this. Smart strategy by Bobby Fish to go for the legs. Oh, a Votus. Nice tag team wrestling here by... Nice tag team wrestling by Bobby Fish. And Roderick Strong, yes. Great. Oh, great tag team wrestling. Otis is... Oh, really getting the hell beat out of him. They're, they're really prevent... They are preventing Otis from making the tag to Tucker. Oh, man. And a kick right to the face by Roddy. There's the cover. Oh, and a kick out. And, you, and also, secondly, SmackDown's two hours, so they can't really... That's the other big... That, that some people can call that as a negative. Oh, my God! That because SmackDown's two hours, we don't get to see a lot of the wrestlers every week. So I feel like what WWE can do is that each week, I feel like they should rotate. I feel like every week, they should rotate talent. They should rotate talent every week. Like, give, you know, maybe one... Like, you could still have your Sasha and Bailey on every week, but I feel like, you know, maybe you could rotate some wrestlers, you know, have, have this amount of... Maybe, like, have Bianca on, you know, for a few weeks. And then, you know... And then maybe give her maybe like a week off. Then because because look, they did a triple threat. Oh, they did it. They did a triple threat. How the hell is the rest of SmackDown going to qualify? How the hell are the rest of the SmackDown girls going to qualify if they took out like two of them already? Oh man, Otis now trying to make Otis now trying to make the tag.
Hey, wait. What the? Oh my god! What the hell? Did Tucker do that? Oh my god, Tucker! What the hell is this? Oh, look at this! Tucker, did, did Tucker just betray, just turn on Otis? What the hell did Tucker do? Tucker just... Ass what the heck is going on here? Tucker now throwing Otis back inside the ring. I can't believe this. What is going on? This is this is by far the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I don't know what the hell is going on anymore, but that was by far the most strangest thing ever. It looks like Tucker. And now, oh man. Oh man. Otis getting dropped. And, oh my god. Otis. O Otis somehow kicked out. Where the hell is Tucker going? Tucker is leaving! Tucker is leaving! What the? What the? Oh my god! What the heck is going on here? Oh no! Oh man, now look at this! Into a submission! And Otis! Otis had no choice! Good God, that was a mess! And Otis finally had to give up! I don't know what the heck that, that was all about, but... But it seemed like Tucker just portrayed his best, his tag team partner. The Undisputed Era get the win in this tag team match. Yikes. Well, coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the artist formerly known as Brendan Vink, now known as Tony Modra. He'll be going one-on-one -on -one with Shane Thorne. Replace Lana, replace Lana, replace Lana, replace Lana, replace Lana, replace her for Peyton Royce, replace her for Peyton Royce. Let's all cheer and pray that they replace Lana. 
Well, here we go. This Shane Thorne and Tony Modra used to be a tag team of the called the Mighty Don't Kneel. Tony Modra was once known as Brendan Vink, who we're taking on his former partner and fr former friend Shane Thorne. Shane the Slapjack Thorne. Oh, of course it crashes.